Welcome everyone to our Power A-Team call. As you can see, there's a number of sites coming in from pretty much all over North America and into Europe as well. We wanna welcome everyone. We wanna welcome the guests who are in the uh, rooms at the various locations. We have three very special guest speakers who are gonna share their personal story with you in the next 30 minutes. And then we'll have you back into your event, whether you're getting your event started, you're closing your event. My name is Mike DiMuccio, I'm a Nikan Royal Diamond. I have been for a very long time, I'm happy to be, and I'm still grateful for every minute of every day of my life because it's an amazing life that this opportunity has enabled me to live. But we're not gonna hear from me today, we've got some really powerful speakers. Coming in all the way from Orlando, Florida is uh, Susan Carver, she's a Nikan Royal Diamond. She's gonna tell you her story first, then we're gonna hear from uh, Suzanne Steele who's coming in from New Hampshire. She can tell your sto her story, and then finally Dave Rolf, who's calling in from San Francisco, and you're gonna hear his story. So let me just switch the cameras here so we can get speaker view. Great, we're, we're ready to go. So I'd like to have Susan Carver, would you please join us? Tell us your personal success story. Uh, I've known you for, gosh, I can't even remember how many years. It's gotta be coming up on 20 years at least. Almost 20, it's almost wow. 20. Wow, wow, amazing. Tell us your story. Okay, well, first of all, thank you for everyone that's watching and thank you for inviting me. I'll keep this very brief. I, uh, I don't have an exciting story. Mike DiMuccio, the, the uh, gentleman who's on the, uh, the hosting this call is an aerospace engineering degree. I was a political science major and I had Disney at about a $7.25 an hour employee on my resume and some odd jobs here and there. So I don't have a great resume. Um, but I think that's why people like my story because they're like, well, if she can do this, you know, she didn't have an MBA. She never owned her own business. She wasn't worth millions before she got in this. She didn't know a lot of people. So they're like, well, if this lady can do it, maybe, maybe I can. But how that went, Mike, was um, I graduated from college. Uh, like most smart young people, you move back in with mom to save money because you're unemployed. And I got a job at Disney for $7.25 an hour. And I, I, I was very unhappy there. And I saw people that were moving up the ladder. And uh, they'd been there 10, 15, 20 years. And they had nothing to show for it. They weren't happy. And they weren't making good money. And they didn't have free time. So why would I want to keep that ladder and climb up that wall if the people up there at the top 10, 15 years ahead of me don't have anything that I desire. So I moved out to California. It's a long story how I got out there, but I moved out to California and in another miserable position, going nowhere, no future. And someone invited me to take a look at this Japanese company called Niken. And I really went to be polite. That was the, that was the whole thing of me coming in was to uh, be polite. So that's what I did. I uh, came and actually learned, like some of you that are watching this video or some of you that are, are live, and I said, you know, I need to get educated. I don't have a great life right now. I need to get educated, and I know Japanese are very smart. So if this is a Japanese company and they're looking for business partners, not customers, because I'd been a customer of a Toyota, I'd been a customer of a Honda and a Sony, et cetera, but I'd never been sitting on the other side of the table as in business with the Japanese and actually marketing something. So that was very curious to me. So I really wanted to, um, I wanted to get educated on what that was all about. And so that's what I did. I came and got educated, fell in love with the products, uh, got started, kept my menial job, uh, and started to move forward. But the most valuable piece of information before I finish up is the fact that I heard something that changed my life, that there's only three ways to make money. I'd never heard this in college at all, never heard it from anyone I knew. There's only three systems to earn money. Number one is to trade your time for money. Number two is invest money to make money. And number three is to leverage your time and efforts through others to make money. Well, I had always worked on trading my time for money and that strategy wasn't working. It really doesn't work for a lot of people. Even people that make 60 and $80,000 a year They've got a decent American income, but then they don't have the time. So it was, a, it was very valuable for me to know that you can either work at McDonald's, you can invest in McDonald's stock, or you can own a McDonald's. And it's pretty a no-brainer to know which one of those people earns the most money because they've got 40 employees working an average of 30 hours a week. So that's 1,200 hours a week, and they're on their boat or their yacht. I mean, you never see the owner of McDonald's, Mike, 
asking if you want fries with that. Why? Because they've got a system in that M3 or money three that's really working well. So I didn't have $1.5 million to buy a McDonald's franchise or any type of franchise. I had less than $5,000 to my name uh, when I first looked at this. But I got some samples. I got educated. And I said, I can bring Nikon into that, that third strategy, that same McDonald's strategy of having others working uh, uh, for me. I can leverage my time and I can create some income more than me just putting all the effort in myself. And I didn't have the money to participate in M2 because it, it takes money to, to make money. So I didn't have $400,000 to put in a smart investment and have it turn, you know, 450 by the end of the year. I, I, those options, those doors were all closed to me. So I love the fact that Niken, this Japanese company, is affordable. So, I, so an M1 person can get into it and then go ahead but play and build in an M3 strategy. So I kept my dead-end job. But I started putting my e few hours in the evenings. I put in maybe five to 10 hours a week, little by little. And uh, after that, uh, it was like rabbits. I had no rabbits. And then I started with two rabbits. And then I had four rabbits and 10. And those people started talking to other people. They started talking to other people. And now today, just to bring you full circle to finish up, um, I've got 10,000 people in my organization. And I personally talked to three myself that were very serious about this but it's all multiplied so the m3 strategy that third way to make money if you're not happy with the way your financial situation and your time situation is going then you need not so much blame yourself but look at the strategy that you're in and if you change strategies you give yourself a chance so uh 10,000 distributors uh more than seven countries and today just to say goodbye the irony, Mike, life is very funny, right? The irony is I've got former Disney, no, current Disney employers, employees that are landscaping my property. They are ripping out the grass. They are doing the whole shebang out there. They are doing, demolishing everything, right? Here's the kicker. Uh, this project is costing one third of my annual salary that I used to make at Disney. Just today. In one day, I will spend more money than I, than I earned in, in, in what, um, five months, four months working at Disney? And I'm spending it in one day, and I've got it. And I had the time to go pick out the plants, do the design, go to nursery to nursery, go get the pavers, go get the fence. I had the time, and I had the money. So that's what's so exciting after all these years, and that's the gift that we're offering people. Well, it's Susan, before you, before you it'll work. get away from us, I have a question for you. Okay. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Yes. If you had your first 90 days in Niken to do over again, what would you do different or what would you do the same? Okay. What I would do the same is I correctly capitalize in my business. I have made every mistake. I mean, there's not a rule book in Niken, but I have broken every rule in Niken except one. I properly capitalized my business. I got out of uh, Mr. Visa, Mr. MasterCard, whatever it was all those years ago. And I made sure that I had products that I could put on people, that I could use myself, that I kept clean for demonstration. And I went out and, and saw the people. So the thing that I did right that I wouldn't change um, now is I capitalized, I didn't undercapitalize my business. Uh, your products in this company are the tools that drive it. So you want to have a one cylinder or a 50 cylinder, depends on the kind of products you get. The things that I did not do correctly is I didn't see enough people in that 90 degree period. When you see more people in a shorter amount of time, the explosion, just like water, if you're running water through this, okay, X amount of water, right? But if you move it to this, it's going to be more powerful of a, of a flow than, than coming out like this. And so I would have intensified that. I would have, in 90 days, I would have probably gotten in front of or made a goal to get in front of at least 60 to 90 people. And that probably would have made me a million dollars that I'll never see because I didn't do that in the beginning. Um, you know, a couple million dollars has come. I'm very grateful. My return on investment has been amazing. But if I had it to do all over again, if I had taken those 90 days and squeezed the amount of people that I saw in a year 
and squeezed it more into a 90-day uh, period, the results probably would have been at least 30% more income or more. I don't want to think about more um, <laughs> that I'll never get. So thanks, Mike. I was having a good day. Here. <laughs> <laughs> just go out and sp spend some more money. Yeah, I'll just go get some more plants. All right. <laughs> yeah. thanks, for Thank your, you. thanks for sharing your story, Susan. My pleasure. Thanks for having Wonderful. me. Well, thank you. We're going to go to New Hampshire now, and we're going to ask a platinum consultant, Suzanne Steele, to tell us your story. Well, thank you, Mike. I, too, want to say I'm, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be part of today's event. But, you know, unlike Susan, I wasn't looking for a business, but I was open to looking at something because I needed better health. Um, my story is... I had broken my neck in a car accident and I hurt all the time. So if that person who had shared Niken with me was just sharing a business with me and didn't really care what was important um, in my life at the time, I don't think I would have looked. So fortunately, you know, that person cared enough about me and started where I was. And I got instant benefits, and those benefits caught my attention. Uh, and I became a happy customer, really. Uh, I, I then really took a, a, I guess, a closer look at what this was about when people started coming to me and asking me, what are you doing? And so I want to share a question that was a statement that was shared with me by a business leader. Uh, so many years ago that I just remember, uh, if I could show you the most advanced wellness technologies driven by the best business, do you think you would recognize it? Well, I certainly didn't. Uh, unlike Susan, who, who had that business hat on and that focus, I was an economics major in college and network marketing was not taught when I was in school. So I had to get educated on this amazing way of earning income. And um, I found out that it was effective, efficient, and what really caught me was it, if you improve your life, you're going to be improving other people's lives, whoever you, know, you decide to share it with. And um, other than like a viable business model, what really caught my attention was what we call the five pillars of health. Uh, having a healthy mind, a healthy body, healthy family, healthy society, and healthy finances. And I came from the corporate world in IT, and um, it was high stress. I worked 24-7 and lots of politics. Um, the focus was always at the bottom line, and it was at the expense of everything else in my life. Uh, I, I guess that the shift that I made was first when it was Christmas Eve dinner, and um, the phone rang, and I needed to leave the table from Christmas Eve and go work on an issue that we were having, and I left my husband and my 98-year-old guest at the table. So I knew things had to change, but I didn't know really how to make that change. Um, but I did decide to start my business and do what we call now a side gig. Uh, the income that I started making actually allowed me to go part-time with that IT job. And as many of you know, um, who know me, after 29 years of that corporate job, I went into work um, almost two years ago now, and uh, they said they didn't need me anymore. After all those years, those hours, those midnight calls, uh, they said my job was being eliminated, and uh, although if I wanted to get severance, I needed to train a group of people to take over those duties. So um, I guess I learned that sometimes you just 
need to get kicked out of the nest. And it was definitely my time to get kicked out. So um, what I realized was even though I came through the body door, I've learned through um, incredible mentors like Mike and Susan and Dave, I learned that the healthy mind was really the most important for me. Um, until I got my mind in the right state, I couldn't be as successful as I really wanted to be. Uh, I needed to unlearn things and then relearn them about myself, this business, and how to create relationships. I, I guess I needed really, which was a huge lesson, I needed to listen more and speak less. And I have been very grateful for all the people that have touched my lives, um, the life of my life and others that are um, part of my team. Um, and I guess, you know, I wanna share three other lessons that my 98 year old friend taught me, uh, three important lessons. He said, first is to always remain curious. At 99 years old, he was still taking courses. His second lesson was to never say no to an invitation. He would drive every Friday down to Boston to visit with dear friends. And his third lesson was to have a responsibility have something that keeps you going and excited about life. So for him, it was caring for his two cats. And for me, it's making a much needed positive impact on this world. My mom left this world too young. She was 48 years old uh, due to cancer, brought on by stress of being a single parent. And what Niken offers is a vehicle that can create that source of income um, in a way that supports our health. And what blows me away is that every day I hear about either directly or indirectly someone's life that has been touched by our wellness home. And when that happens, I I get hugs from people. I never got hugs in the corporate world. And um, I know that what I'm doing is what I'm meant to do. And I guess for me, Mike, it, it really is all about the journey. Fantastic. Well, I have one question for you. Same question. Okay. If you had your first 90 days to do over again in Niken, what would you have done differently or what would you have done the same? Okay, well, um, I know the one thing that I would do differently would be to um, encourage my, um, my A that I brought with me, my sponsor, um, to my first few events, I'd have them talk about the business. You see, I was not educated on the business, so I, um, I told them, please don't talk about that. Big mistake. I don't know where my business would be had I taken that, um, that, that advice that was given to me that I ignored. So that would be the huge first lesson. Um, I too, like Susan, I would have increased the number of people in a shorter amount of time. Um, and also like Susan, I did invest in my business. So I had my, um, my products, my employees available to, to utilize. Um, I was blueberry picking this morning and it got me thinking about some other lessons that um, I might change um, or things that I remember. You know, first is when you're in a field of 10 acres of blueberries at the height of the season, you don't have to go far to find people that can, they have their lives affected. So even though initially I started walking down this long path, I realized that there are berries all over that are ready to be picked. There are people all over that can utilize what we have and their lives can be improved. Um, uh, the second lesson was just keep picking. You know, just keep staying out there and 
putting yourself in um, places that you, things you like to do, people, around people um, that you like to hang around with, and you'll find things, you'll find opportunities. Another lesson was, you know, come back again, come back later. If someone's not quite ready, or in my case, these blueberries were not ripe, I know that I'll be able to come back in a week, in a, not in a month or two for berries, but for people, you might need to come back a couple of months later to see where their lives are. It might be in a different place. And don't get upset if they're not ready. You know, it's just not the right time for them. Just move on, go to another blueberry bush, see what's ready there. And, you know, just remember that there are more than enough people whose lives that we can touch. And um, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it on that note because we do have one more speaker and I wanna thank you for your story and for your tips as well for your, what you would do differently. I think that's all consistent advice, good advice. You're welcome. Thank you, Suzanne. I'm gonna switch now to uh, California, I guess it's San Francisco where Dave Rolf is at. Dave, would you mind sharing your personal success story? Dave has been, with us probably i've known dave the longest on this call i met dave uh at an event in niken when niken was first opening the doors in canada 26 and a half years ago dave you there yes i am tell us your story dave oh god do i have to you must <laughs> <clears throat> well welcome everybody thank you very much for uh, being on the call and uh Okay, here we go. Well, actually, my story started in 1975, and I have to say this because I think it was very important. I went to a meeting, and I was the only person in the meeting, and a gentleman who was uh, dressed in a three-piece suit and very well-educated got up on the stage, and he started to promote this and talk about an idea. And he said to me, he said to me because I was the only person there, he said, just imagine if you owned a Coca-Cola machine on every corner of every street in America, and every time somebody bought a Coke, you made a nickel. Well, I sat in the back of that room and I saw just piles and piles and piles and piles of nickels. And that vision stuck in my head. I could, I mean, I was just beside myself with that whole concept and that idea. And for the next 15 years, I went out and bashed my head up and down and everywhere and couldn't figure out how to make this, this thing go. So... In 1990, I got approached and some guy called me up, an old friend of mine, and said, hey, there's this new Japanese company in town and they're looking for people to join them and they're selling magnets. You want to join? And I thought to myself, you got to be nuts. And I thought of refrigerator magnets at the time, actually, it was the, the truth behind this. And I said, well, heck, some guy came up with the pet rock. I think if a Japanese company can come up with magnets, well, maybe that'll fly, you know. But I, I was so negative about network marketing, I said no. And uh, so for the next few months, I kind of flip-flopped around. Nothing was changing in my life. I, I happened to have lost everything in a business venture, and I was dead broke. I had a family. I needed to put food on the table, and I was scratching my head. And no one really um, was asking me to go work for them. And I was really unemployable because I was somewhat of an entrepreneur at the time. But he kept promoting and he kept talking and he kept providing me with information. And finally I jumped in and, and uh, went to work and did what I needed to do. So I've been with the company 27 years. Um, you know, man, I, there's so much to say, Michael, but anyway, um, so I've been with the company for a long time. In 1999, I wrote a book called vested interest. I traveled the world, I mentored people, I did seminars, um, and I kind of switched my focus to helping as many people as I could accomplish what I accomplished. Because I, you know, from my viewpoint, I got to the top, I had the big heap of people, I had tens of thousands of people in my organization and all the various countries around the world and, and had a nice seven figure income and life was pretty good. But uh, I realized something that was truly more important than anything else at that time, but it was no longer about me. I knew that from for a long time, but the success of my business was truly in helping other people. Something I heard with what Suzanne said and something I heard with 
you know, for many, many years of that's the joy and the excitement and the fun of building this business is to watch the smile on somebody else's face change, you know, from being completely miserable to being completely happy. And I think that was one of the side benefits of this business. But my whole focus throughout my career, and I got very well known for this, is I was all about the economics, the money, the business opportunity, um, and the strategy of how to be successful in that arena. But I understood one very valuable thing, Michael, and that was the reason we had the opportunity was because of the products and the technology and the philosophy of Nikon. Without those, we didn't have much of an opportunity. So it was a, a combination of those two things that I utilized throughout my whole career in, in getting what I wanted to get from, from being involved with this particular business. I've, <clears throat> I've done everything there is to do with Nikon in the sense of I've been in, I've been out, I've been around, I've been you know, away from it, back into it. I, in 1992, I quit for three and a half years. I lost everything I had in Nikon. I had ended up with only having one leg, and then I jumped back in in 1994. As a matter of fact, Susan Carver, I remember when she first started. Uh, it was at a meeting in Thousand Oaks, California, and uh, <clears throat> Susan was a, a big part of, you know, I, I watched her grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and pretty much seen everybody in the company grow from the bottom to the top. Maybe there's one or two people that are still around from, from that time because it's now been 27 years. I'm about to start my 28th year. And that was a milestone. I had never done anything for 27 years <laughs> except for live my life, you know. Um, but, you know, most recently, I last year, I ran into a situation. I got cancer. Um, I got diagnosed, and it was a, a very serious cancer. It's a small cell. And the uh, di diagnosis was, you know, you handle this or, you know, say goodbye. And um, so I went to work to handle it. I did everything I knew spiritually, physically, with, got all the right uh, medical professions and went through chemotherapy. And man, that's disgusting, let me tell you. And uh, as of about four, maybe four weeks ago, five weeks ago, I am 100% cancer free. So I beat the crap out of that thing. And um <clears throat> Unfortunately, and I'm, I'm not saying this in any other light, I was on a very strict regiment of medical, don't want to touch anything non-medical, uh, so I followed that protocol. But before, I was loaded up with everything I could do holistically, and then after, of course, supplements and everything necessary. But when I finished that, Michael, and, and what came out of that after the last operation, um, I was, I mean, I, it was unbelievable. I was sky high. And I said, you know, I got to get back on track here and, and have some more fun. And, and, you know, I started, I rewrote my book to bring it up to present time. I'm coming out with a new version of it. It's going to be a video version. You can see it on DaveRolf.com. And here's what I've learned over the years. And, and it was said a couple of times here. When you get involved with this business, you know, there's a perspective that you need to learn at the beginning that will give you the benefit of everything it has to offer. And I think we don't pay enough attention to that learning curve of, of learning the whole picture. In other words, you know, I had the benefit of 15 years of playing with other network marketing companies and learned everything I could learn, you know, what to do, what not to do, success, no success, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So when I walked into Nikon, I knew exactly what to do. There wasn't any, there wasn't any question about it. It was the education. It's like kind of like a doctor, you know, he goes to school for seven to 10 years before he starts his practice. But when he starts his practice, man, he knows what to do. And so many of us are thrust into this business, this opportunity, and, you know, with not all the bells and whistles that are necessary in, in place. So, I see my role in a, in a slightly different way today in the year 2018 than I saw my role in, the, in, in 1990 when I first started. You know, I, I'm at a different stage in my life. I, in, I you know, kind of in 19, uh, 2000, I was free to do whatever I wanted to do as a result of building Nikon, which is, you know, as Mike said and Suzanne said and 
And Susan Carver said is, you know, she's putting in a backyard and spending all kinds of money and having fun. Well, that's the benefit of what you do, right, is to have fun and to enjoy. And, of course, you have your five pillars kind of situation. So my role now is to help everybody else get what we got. And what we got was freedom. And that freedom was freedom of choice to do what you wanted to do when you wanted to do it. It was freedom to have, to be healthy. It was freedom to enjoy time with your family. It was freedom to contribute to society and make it a better place. It was freedom to have, you know, the finances that would allow you to do what you need to do. Now, interestingly enough, we're at a time where there are more people available to do what we want to offer them to do than ever before, ever before. And it, it, interesting statistics that I'm, I've done research now for the last five years in various companies and trends and, and where people are going and what they're doing. And, you know, it, it's fascinating what's uh, going to happen and what's ahead of us. And it's very, very positive. So that's where I'm headed. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to provide. There's my story. Here we are, 2018. <laughs> wow. You've got, a, you've got quite a story because it's all over, up and down and in and out. And that's fantastic. And it's good for people to understand that that's the flexibility and the freedom that this opportunity has actually afforded you. But I have yeah. one question, same question as everybody, and keep an eye on time. We are a little bit over right now. If you had your first 90 days in Niken to do over again, knowing what you know now, what would you have done differently or what would you have done the same? Well, I, number one, I would have joined when I was first asked. And number two, I would have worked 10 times harder. I, I mean, I'm still being paid on day one, 27 years later. And that's a phenomenal concept to grab is that, you know, this is a business where you're constantly being paid on what work you do. But you got to be smart about it. And I'm not going to pussyfoot around on this particular topic. You know, you do have to put in your time to make this work. There is no question about that. But if you do and you do it concentrated and you give it everything you got, the rewards are beyond belief, actually. Uh, they're spectacular. Uh, just to give you an example, my upline in Herbalife that I did in 1982 has made over $100 million from Herbalife. I quit. Do you think he has some time freedom? <laughs> so get in, stay in, and don't quit, I guess. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Fantastic. I think uh, another and Raise your hand if you need help. Raise your hand if you need help. That's a good one. That's a you good know? one, too. And by um, the way, speaking of which, uh, Dave Rolf and myself uh, and others that you've heard on this call, we're going to be in Orlando in a week's time, actually, uh, this coming week. It's not too late to go ahead and make your reservations. OrlandoSummit.net. And come and listen to us live and in person, spend a few days with us and really learn the ins and outs of the business because it's going to give you the head start you need in order to really create the life and the lifestyle that you want. Can I put in a plug, Michael, that I'm doing a seminar Friday afternoon for a couple of three hours and you don't want to miss that one. You don't want to miss that one. Well, we're up for time. I want to thank our, our speakers, Susan Carver, uh, Suzanne Steele, and of course, Dave Rolf. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to all the people who are out there listening. Uh, we leave you back to the meeting that you're in. We look forward to seeing you on the Nikan Highway, and hopefully we'll see some of you in Orlando next week. Cheers, everyone. Thanks. Bye, Michael. Thank you very much.